second time, and I call the Honourable Member for Brisbane. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Look, it's a, an honour to be following from the Member for Canberra, and I thank her for her wonderful contribution, as well as um, the Member for Braddon, the Member for Solomon, and the Member for Kingscote Smith. It's not often in this place that we can um, come together and agree on legislation that is agreeable to both sides of the House. But the, the no jab, no pain measure reinforces the Australian government's position that immunisation is a very important public health measure for children, their families and their community. And the coalition is absolutely committed to making sure that every child in every home has a safe environment um, and has a safe educational environment as well. Uh, as the member for Brisbane, I have a huge number of schools that I represent in my electorate, as well as many childcare centres, preschools and kindies. This um, policy will bring clarity to the rules and it highlights the, the very importance of immunisation and protecting public health, especially for those who are the most vulnerable in our community, children. The measure aims to further increase the immunisation rates in the Australian community because we know that the more that um, people are immunised, Mr Deputy Speaker, the, that, um, the safer that everyone's going to be. And from the 1st of January 2016, no jab, no pay measure amends the immunisation requirements for the family assistance payments, including the childcare benefit, childcare rebate and family tax benefit A end of year supplement. Currently, um, immunisation requirements only apply to children up to the age of seven for that childcare benefit and childcare rebate, and at ages one, two and five for the family tax benefit A end of year supplement. This simply is not enough to encourage higher rates of immunisation. And from the 1st of January 2016, in order for the individual to be entitled to the uh, childcare rebate and childcare rebate pa um, payments, their child will need to meet immunisation requirements up to the age of 20. This is very much a common sense approach, and it means not only our children will um, uh, make sure that we don't witness uh, the return of some of those debilitating diseases, but it will reduce the burden on our healthcare system by keeping kids out of hospital. Immunisation stops the spread of many harrowing and life-threatening diseases like diphtheria. The release of the diphtheria toxin in the blood can cause nerve paralysis and heart failure. In the early 1900s, diphtheria caused more death in Australia than any other infectious disease. And I was hearing about that when I visited an historical um, uh, photographic exhibition at the Royal Brisbane Hospital recently to um, uh, mark the centenary um, of, of, of the Anzac centenary. And it is absolutely incredible when you think about this, that the increasing use of vaccines have led to its virtual disappearance. No vaccinated person, Deputy Speaker, has died from diphtheria in Australia in the last 20 years. And we must ensure that that statistic remains unchanged. Or measles, another very highly infectious acute viral disease um, that can cause serious complications, particularly in very young children. Complications of measles include middle ear infections and laryngitis, as well as the more serious infections, such as pneumonia, encephalitis, which can lead to brain damage and death. And I know that today we've heard many stories of members having personal experiences. My personal experience is also with a friend of the family who uh, was not vaccinated when she was a child and contracted measles. Um, she um, had a lovely baby boy and unfortunately suffered from deafness and um, it was a, a terrible, terrible thing to go through. Um, he's now contributing to society, but um, this could have been avoided um, if she had been able to have a vaccination, and unfortunately she was unable to do that as a young child. There is um, meningococcal disease, where one in 10 sufferers um, of which dies in Australia. And of those who survive, one in 30 have severe skin scarring or loss of limb, and one in 30 has severe brain damage. And finally, members have spoken today about whooping cough. It's an extremely um, contagious respiratory infection and the disease caused, <coughs> causes uncontrolling coughing and vomiting and can last for several months and can be particularly dangerous for little babies under the age of 12 months. And um, patients have described the experience as if they were actually coughing up their lungs for months on end. It is clear then that we must act now 
to ensure that these diseases cannot spread any further. In order for an individual to be entitled to the Family Tax Benefit Part A end of year supplement, their child will need to meet those immunisation requirements from age one up to the end of the calendar year that they turn 19. These benefits do not impact fortnightly instalments of Family Tax Benefit A. These changes only impact that end of year supplement, which is currently $726.35 per year per child, as long as those conditions are met. Critically, um, this measure will remove vaccine objection, previously known as the conscientious objector, has an exemption category. This measure is simply not good enough to jeopardise the health of the, of the broader community. So currently, if an individual makes a declaration that they have an objection based on personal, philosophical, religious or medical belief to being vaccinated, um, they'll meet those immunisation requirements. According to the Australian Childhood Immunisation Register, more than 39,000 Australian children under the age of seven are not vaccinated because these, the parents objected to vaccinations, which is an increase of more than 24,000 children over 10 years. This is a very dangerous trend that we must reverse. For every child that misses out on a chance to be vaccinated, the chance of infection increases. No child should be afraid to get the education they deserve simply because some parents decided to object to potentially life-saving vaccines. And this is a public health issue. The government's determined that whilst parents have a right to decide not to vaccinate their children, if they are doing so as a vaccine objector, their decision will mean that they will no longer be eligible for some government financial assistance. We have to take a tough stance for the good of public safety and for the health of our youth. Children will meet the immunisation requirements if they are fully immunised, engaged in an approved catch-up schedule or have a valid exemption, and uh, we will allow for children who cannot be vaccinated for health reasons to be exempt so that they um, may not slip through the cracks um, financially. Children with uh, medical contraindications or natural immunity certified by a general practitioner will continue to meet immunisation requirements. Deputy Speaker, children are considered fully immunised when they have received the appropriate vaccines for their age cohort under the National Immunisation Program for Early Childhood under the um, Early Childhood Schedule. A child will also meet immunisation requirements if they are a participant in the vaccine study approved by the Human Research Ethics Committee registered with the National Health and Medical Research Council. Additionally, the Secretary will be given new legislative powers to exempt a child from immunisation requirements in a very limited range of circumstances, for example, where a non-parent carer doesn't have the legal authority to vaccinate a child in their care. Deputy Speaker, where a child cannot be vaccinated as required and the Commonwealth Chief Medical Officer has declared that the relevant vaccines or all of the vaccines are temporarily um, unavailable, the child is considered to meet the immunisation requirements. This measure is compatible with human rights because it advances the protection of the right to physical health and to the extent that it also um, limits human rights. Those limitations are reasonable, necessary and proportionate. The bill for this measure is accompanied by a statement of compatibility with human rights in accordance with the government's normal processes. In conjunction with these changes, the Minister for Health has introduced legislation to extend the Australian Childhood Immunisation Register to record immunisation information for children aged between 7 and 20 years, and this measure is expected to produce savings of um, 508 million, uh, roughly, over four years. Deputy Speaker, this has been a very hotly um, contested and discussed topic, and one that's important to myself and the community that I represent. Often the balance on this debate has been conflated and misconstrued, and hopefully this bill will bring clarity to the people as well as peace of mind. Tough choices have to be made for the safety and for the greater community on the whole. I support the bill.